Erev Tov, I'm Stephen ben Danun, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Today on the Temple Mount, we had some very disturbing news uh, that is coming out of Israel. The tensions are continually, continually mounting on, on the Temple Mount. Uh, when some uh, the Jewish uh, believers there, some Orthodox Jewish believers, went on the Temple Mount escorted by the Israeli police, they were... Uh, inundated with a Palestinian mob. Uh, they were chanting uh, Allah Aqsa, uh, saying that Allah is great, um, and, uh, excuse me, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, which means Allah is great. And they were constantly holding up, and you'll see this on, on the screen here, three fingers, some were doing like this, some were doing like this, uh, letting the Jewish people know that they had the three young men that had been kidnapped. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of interesting, you know, the United Nations denies the fact, uh, and even the Palestinians are saying that in one of their news reports there that they never kidnapped anyone. Uh, the United Nations saying there is no evidence whatsoever. Well, clearly, in the video footage that, you're, that you will view here tonight on Israeli News Live, they are claiming defiantly that they have uh, taken capture of these three young men. But we know that the God of Israel is truly the God of all mankind, of all humanity, is the God of the entire universe. And as a uh, beloved uh, believer that follows uh, the ministry here, sent us a message uh, today, and I wished I could remember the name of the individual, but uh, said that it came to her heart that it was like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that uh, God was certainly watching over them, even though they are in the fiery furnace. In other news, let's continue on. Uh, we have Brother Gary Lowry uh, from California that will be speaking with us now on uh, some of the events that are going on in Israel. Brother Gary has got his uh, background in military and uh, he can certainly en enlighten us on what's going on over in uh, Israel at this time, especially the events that are surrounding Gaza. Brother Gary, what's, bring us up to speed on what's happening over there. As we know, there are uh, these three youths are still missing. And uh, the Israeli Army and Air Force are doing their best to um, recover them and uh, last night they struck 12 targets in Gaza the IAF did and uh, there have been quite a few of the terrorists that were released during the Gilead Shalit deal have been recovered because they're continuing their terrorist activities and right. the uh, Israeli army has um, got orders from Netanyahu to get to bring those guys into custody, and they have. They've recovered quite a few of them, murderers and uh, terrorists. So now is this some of the same same people, brother Gary, that they had released uh, with the with the, with the deal with the Palestinians? Yes. Uh, when Shalit was released, they released about a thousand terrorists, and they're recovering quite a few of those. And also, during this recent release of terrorists for peace, uh, they've also brought numerous ones back into custody. So those people are still involved in terrorist activities just outside of Israel. And now, with, uh, with this thing that's going on, it has allowed the government to go in and retake those people. They're all bad actors over there. Exactly. And no doubt that there's uh, the ones that they have released will probably have a big part in the abduction of these uh, three Isra Israeli youths there. And, and you know, Brother Gary, what's really interesting to me is that, uh, and, and I've already seen this in, in some of the Israeli reports as well, like on Arut Shiva, uh, had it been Palestinian teenagers that had been abducted. I mean, the whole world would be on top of this, but you see very little in the secular media whatsoever 
uh, around the world, the United States or anywhere else, about these uh, three young men being abducted. And in the Vatican, uh, Giulio Mianti, uh, the Italian journalist that writes for Arut Shiva, uh, he stays in touch with us quite a bit. And he even pointed out when he sent me the article that he was going to publish uh, that he said, why is it that the Vatican uh, has remained silent? Let, let it be the uh, Palestinians have a young man abducted like that, and, and they would go nuts over it. Uh, the world would know about it. The Pope would be out there and be active about it, but totally silent. Uh, and, and we know that his silence uh, speaks louder than words. Exactly. There has been no great outcry by the current Pope for the release of those, these uh, young men. Two of them are children still. You know, they're exactly. 16 years old. And uh, the other, the oldest is only 19. And you really don't hear much about it on the news here either. And uh, this whole storm has kind of died down. You know, it's been quite a while that these boys have been missing. And they did nothing more than uh, study the Bible, the Torah. Mm. And so that's why they were captured. And uh, why why don't we have a, a huge outcry about what's happening to them? You know, what about their welfare? What about their parents? Um, I believe the Israeli government is doing all that they can. And um, I think this bolsters uh, Hamas and the Palestinians in that um, we really haven't heard too much out of the United States either on this. They're, right. they're worried about this peace deal that they're working more than they're worried about these uh, people's lives and the disruption of their lives or the, the things that have happened. You know, one interesting fact that, that I recently learned and that is that uh, since 2001, there have been 23,110 terrorist attacks since 9-1-1. Good night. 23,000. That's an incredible, incredible number of attacks against people for no other reason than a religious reason to attack them. So we know that Hamas, has ba they basically claim that they are responsible for this. There are things on Facebook um, that are glorifying what is going on right now. And we have a government in the United States of America that is backing terrorists, which is against our own rules of um, government. We're, they're not allowed to make peace deals with known terrorist organizations, yet that is exactly what they're proposing. Exactly. Brother Gary, I want to ask you too real quick, uh, as far as um, Israel, they're, I don't know if they've already engaged Gaza as of yet, or if they're intending to engage Gaza, but I did see one report where Hamas has said that if they attack Gaza, they're going to attack Haifa. Do you, do you know as far as that they've got that capability? Uh, I mean, I know there's been a lot of arms that they tried to, to ship into Gaza secretly, and of course Israel's intercepted, like the one that happened uh, a little while back, uh, where they had some very powerful missiles. I didn't know if you know of anything else as far as their capabilities now. I noticed today that they were talking about on, uh, on DEMCA that uh, some of these attacks are aimed at uh, these these gas lines, and that's why those rockets are seeming to fall short. They're trying to to attack these gas lines that are going across um, across this desert area. And uh, they did, as far as what I know right now, from Arut Sheba, that Israel did attack Gaza twelve times. Right, so well, that and that's what's kind of that's what's throwing me off right now is with the threat that Hamas is making about t attacking Haifa. What what are they talking about then? I, maybe they're looking at a ground invasion or, or, or something of that sort. Because thus far, 
It's only been air assaults, uh, you know, lobbing in, uh, you know, cannon fire, etc. So maybe they're more or less looking at a ground assault. They have been uh, moving door to door in certain areas. The, the news, uh, as I was saying earlier, the news today that they're talking about is these Gaza rockets are aimed at that Kurdish oil route via Israel. So when, there are, when, when we hear about these rockets landing in uh, Ashkelon and Elliot, those areas, they are actually trying to damage that, that oil pipeline is what they're doing. Those, those things are not really falling short. They're, they're just trying to hit those targets. So, you know, we, you have people from Gaza firing rockets towards Israel and towards these areas to do damage, to do harm. They believe that if they destroy that, that uh, pipeline, that there's going to cause, you know, it's going to cause an environmental disaster. It's going to cause Israel a lot of money. It's yes. going to bring uh, more fire to their uh, cause. So, you know, they, they uh, I expect to see uh, this thing escalate even more since last night with these air attacks against those neighborhoods. Well, you know, today... The United Nations, uh, surprisingly, the United Nations is condemning uh, the Syrian aggression that is spilling over into the Golan, uh, warning them uh, that the between the uh, the rebel fighters and the Syrian government that uh, it could cause uh, with the escalating of t tensions in the Golan that it may cause Israel to enter into the conflict. Uh, so they warned uh, the Syrian government, which is a little, little bit of a surprise that they would. Uh, do something like that because typically uh, the United Nations is never on, uh, and I can't say that they're on the side of Israel, but it's just kind of interesting that they actually made that comment publicly.